So the elections tonight were a disaster. Now, before I tell you the results, I just want you to take a moment and breathe. There's a lot of people across the country and even around the world who are watching these results and they're just as frustrated and disappointed as you feel. So as you watch the numbers come in, know that you're not alone in feeling hopeless and, you know, really, really frustrated. Understand that we're kind of all dealing with this together and hopefully you can take some comfort knowing that. Uh, with that being said, I can't sugarcoat this for you. It was a disaster and it's not over yet. But tonight did not go the way we wanted it to go. So getting to the results when it comes to the Idaho primary with 42 percent of precincts reporting, Joe Biden is winning 47 to 39. When it comes to Michigan, a state where I hoped Bernie Sanders could pull off an upset in the same way that he did back in 2016. Joe Biden is winning with 85% of precincts reporting. That may change by the time you see this video, but currently he's winning 53 to 38. When it comes to Mississippi, Joe Biden is winning 81 to 15% with 87% of precincts reporting. Currently, Bernie Sanders is fighting to remain viable in Mississippi. When it comes to Missouri, Joe Biden is winning 60 to 35 percent with 95 percent of precincts reporting in North Dakota with only 10 percent of precincts reporting. Bernie Sanders actually is winning 40 to 26 percent, although I will say this state only has 14 pledge delegates up for grabs. So it's not going to change much in the overall state of the race. When it comes to Washington state, it is a dead heat with 68 percent of precincts reporting. Both are at 33 percent. Joe Biden trailing Bernie Sanders, but, you know, they've been going back and forth all night, so that could change. And overall, what I really was hoping for was an upset in Michigan. I was hoping for Bernie Sanders to win Washington State handily and then to hopefully knock off another state. I don't know, you know, uh, North Dakota, Idaho, but it's not good. It's not good. Michigan was really the state that we were eyeing, the state that can really turn things around and hopefully shift the narrative, right? Because that is the state with the largest amount of delegates up for grabs. And if there was another upset, then that could potentially have made a really big difference. But um, we just, we didn't get that. And now it's admittedly looking very, very bad. And then next week on Tuesday, we have, I believe, four more states going and if we don't pull out a victory, it may be over. Now, before we talk more about the implications of uh, tonight's results, I do want to look to some of the exit polls, at least from Michigan, because it really shows you what's happening. This isn't just an ideological battle. This is a generational fight, because look at this here. Joe Biden is getting support from almost all of the older voters, and Bernie Sanders is getting support from almost all all of the younger voters but the problem here as you can see is that older voters make up a higher percentage than younger voters you know 18 to 24 year olds only account for seven percent of voters 25 to 29 year olds only account for eight percent of voters meanwhile you know joe biden's strongest demographic 65 or over accounts for almost a quarter of the entire electorate and he gets 73 percent of them you have 32 percent of overall voters being between ages 50 and 64 so this is generational now what's interesting is that when you look at this exit poll from michigan that was posted by cbs news it asks should the U.S. economic system be completely overhauled? 49% said yes, but yet voters still went for Biden. So um, really what I think we're seeing is that older voters who mostly watch MSNBC and cable news, they, they agree with us when it comes to Medicare for all, right? We've won the messaging battle, but all of this talk about electability has been beaten into their brains and they just don't want to take a risk with Bernie Sanders, even if they feel like maybe he's better. Maybe, you know, young people like them and all the energy is is with Bernie Sanders. They just they're opting for Joe Biden. Now, I am not going to declare the race over because here's the thing. Joe Biden is such a weak candidate and the race so far has been so volatile that anything can happen. So if Bernie Sanders has a blowout performance at Sunday's debate. There's the potential there. If voters really see just how weak Joe Biden is, 
that maybe things can change. Is that likely? No, I don't want to get your hopes up because first of all, Bernie Sanders, let's face it, he's just too nice. He just won't hammer Biden in the way that he needs to. He's too nice. And even if it's the case that Bernie Sanders has some type of blowout performance and, you know, Biden face plants, the media is still very much in control here. Older voters, by and large, watch cable news, MSNBC and CNN, and they have a monopoly on the political narrative. So even if it's the case that Joe Biden fumbles, is it going to change much? I'm not sure. And the reason why it doesn't look good is because when you look at polling for states coming up next week, uh, I believe Arizona, Florida, Joe Biden is poised to do very, very well in those states. So our last hope really is that Bernie Sanders can have a great debate performance and Joe Biden can have a really terrible debate performance. However, holding on to that hope, it may not mean much because the Democratic Party is already talking about possibly canceling the debate because they're willing to wrap it up. They want to wrap it up and they're willing to cancel it just to kind of hide Joe Biden away until November. In fact, on NPR, Clyburn said just that. I think we will be at a point where Joe Biden will be the prohibitive nominee of the party. And I think the DNC, the Democratic National Committee, should then step in, make an assessment, and determine whether or not they ought to have any more debates. And if you think that the DNC wouldn't do something like that, they absolutely will do anything in their power to protect power. They've got all the institutional advantages that we lack, and they will use them to make sure that we are thoroughly defeated every single time. And you see individuals going on MSNBC like James Carville saying, hey, let's wrap this puppy up. Uh, you see Andrew Yang endorsing Joe Biden saying, look, I said I'd support the nominee and it's going to be Biden. So I'm falling in line. And, you know, basically... It's not looking very good. Now, my philosophy is we fight until the very end. Bernie should stay in until the convention because guess what? He has a lot of money and resources. We've been donating. We've been phone banking and text banking and canvassing for him. And we put a lot of time and resources and our own money into this election. With that being said, it just doesn't look good. And at this point in time, it seems as if Joe Biden uh, will very soon emerge as the... Uh, presumptive nominee, which sucks because just like a week and a half ago, it seemed as if Super Tuesday could have been the opposite result with Bernie Sanders emerging, but the establishment came out for Joe Biden. All these endorsements helped, right? It helped. Um, so what I want us to keep in mind is that Bernie Sanders built up a movement and it's not just going to go away when this election is over, if we do in fact lose, which Seems like that's going to be the case. Not to sugarcoat it, not to be too down, but I'm just trying to be realistic here. Um, and rather than just remaining hyper-focused on electoral politics, even though that's important because we need power, we also have to make sure that we continue organizing when the election is over, right? In the way that Occupy did. Bernie Sanders took the energy that existed during the Occupy movement, and he harnessed that into this huge mass movement. And, you know, a lot of people will be talking about who's going to be the new standard bearer, because I think there's no chance Bernie runs again. In fact, I don't think he should run again, because running these types of presidential campaigns where you travel, you're you're going to different states, you know, in the same day, that's just, that's exhausting, and Bernie has done enough. It's on us to make sure that this movement is alive. And in a way, We've won in the sense that we have basically convinced everyone, in spite of all of the propaganda, astonishingly, that Medicare for All is the way to go. Um, it's just that that propaganda didn't work, at least, you know, not as much as the electability myth did. And voters, at the end of the day, who are older, just trusted MSNBC and CNN, and they're going with the safe bet in their minds, uh, which is Joe Biden. And they're going to find out in November that that wasn't the safest bet because I think that Joe Biden will most likely lose to Donald Trump. So if that's, you know, if that's not the case, then um, great. I guess that, you know, Donald Trump's out and defeated. But then we have four years of no change with Joe Biden, four years of stalling on climate change. So, you know, regardless, 
this is a really bad situation currently. And I don't want anyone to get blackpilled. I just want you to take some time to realize that this energy that was created by Bernie's movement, it needs to be harnessed now. It can't just dissipate, right? Um, and look, I don't want to talk as if it's over because, again, I really believe that Bernie should stay in until the convention. Will he do that? Probably not. He didn't stay in until the convention last time. He endorsed Hillary Clinton in, what, like May or June? Um, so, look, we just we keep on going. We keep on fighting because we can't afford not to. The election results tonight absolutely just were devastating, and I feel genuinely depressed. And I'm sure that a lot of you feel the same way, but just know that you're not alone. We all are kind of grappling with this defeat. And we're just going to keep going because if we quit, then all of the haters are going to be uh, enjoying that. But one thing I find interesting is that you're going to slightly see the narrative shift from corporate Democrats and MSNBC. You're seeing individuals like James Carville kind of, you know, tacitly suggest, hey, you know, Bernie Sanders coming back us by saying that, you know, Bernie Sanders did a lot. You see um, senators like Brian Schatz say, we need everyone in this, in this fight, everyone, when just like a couple of weeks ago, they were telling the progressive left to fuck off. So um, they turned a blind eye to a large portion of the party, and they're going to see once again what happens when you run someone who is just not very popular, who is disliked, who won't excite the base, who doesn't speak to young people. I mean... I saw a tweet, and I wish I can, you know, uh, reference this person and give them credit, but, you know, the trajectory that Joe Biden is on, he is on pace to do worse than Hillary Clinton with young people, which is a very, very bad sign for November. It's a very bad sign. So, it is what it is. We just uh, keep moving. We keep going forward because we have no choice. These crises that exist aren't going to correct themselves these people who are marginalized and vulnerable, they don't have the voices to fight for themselves. So we have to do what we can to empower those people and just keep, keep going. I don't know what else to say.